Thank you, thank you. How's everyone doing? <laughs> Thanks for having me back. <laughs> it's really an honor to be here. Uh, thank you, Pastor Strader. Um, I appreciate being here. Um, but yes, um, just to give you a quick recap, um, how many are, uh, weren't here like last month when I was here? Oh, right there. Awesome. Nice to meet you. Um, so yeah, I'm from Texas. Uh, everybody knows that uh, from Fort Worth, Texas. Longhorns, I see you right there. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so last, last month's joke was that um, everything's made bigger in Texas until I came along and broke the streak, which is why you only see my head from here. Um, but I really appreciate uh, just the fact to be here and everything. So, so yeah, if I haven't met you yet, I'm looking forward to meeting you afterwards. Absolutely. So... Let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer, and we'll dive straight into the Word of God. Dear God, thank you so much for, for who you are. We enter your, your presence with thanksgiving and praise, God. Thank you for, you for everything you've done this week, God. And God, I thank you because you're our Father, and we can come with boldness to you, God, and just confident knowing that you listen to us. So Holy Spirit, speak to us tonight. Holy Spirit, open our ears to hear, open our hearts to understand the words that you have to say tonight. Holy Spirit, it's all about you. You do the work tonight. In Jesus' name, we love you, and we can't wait to see what you teach us tonight. Amen. Amen, amen. Well, before we start, I have a quick little story. How many of y'all know that I love stories? Y'all love stories? Come on. All right, so here's the first, here's the first story. Um, it says, a man was walking on the beach. God came to him and said, son, you've been so faithful that I'm going to grant you one wish. The man was excited, and he thought about it and said, I've always wanted to go to Hawaii, but I'm afraid of flying, Lord. So would you please build me a bridge across the ocean so I could go? God said, son, think of the logistics of that. That is impossible. Think about something else. What's another thing? Well, the man said, God, my wife says I'm insensitive. So my wish is I want to know why women think how they think, and I want to know how they think how they think. And there was a long pause. And God said, do you want four lanes or two lanes on that bridge, my son? <laughs> <laughs> well, praise the Lord for women. I really, I, I, I thank God because it's a woman that brought me into earth. Um, and, and yeah, so for those that are into theology, that was a joke. Um, if God comes and speaks to you and tells you, uh, what do you want, son? Hopefully it's not a bridge. <laughs> um, but hey, go ahead and open up your Bibles to Jonah. Jonah, we're going to start with uh, verse 1, and we're going to go all the way to verse 15. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them. Or if it's on your phone, go ahead and turn on your Bible. <laughs> and this is a story that many of us kind of read through and learned about in Kids Church. Um, but if you haven't, you're in for a surprise. A good treat. And the word says, The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amittai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it, because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. So he went to Port Joppa, where he found his ship leaving for Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. Now, how many of y'all know that's a bad idea? <laughs> bad idea. Verse 4, But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. 
So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at such a time like this, he shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Then the crew cast a loss to see which one of them had offended the gods and caused this terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the person. Why has this awful storm come down on us, they demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Are you from Lakeland, Florida? <laughs> Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it, they groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to you to stop the storm? Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know that this terrible storm is all my fault. Instead, the sailors rode even harder and harder and harder to get to the ship to land. But the stormy sea was too violent for them, and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. Oh, Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death, oh, Lord. You have sent this storm upon him for your own good reasons. Then the sailors picked Jonah up. And threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. And the storm stopped at once. And that's all I want to read for today. Um, but if you keep reading, um, you find out that the sailors just in that moment realize that, wow, his God is real. Like, we just threw this fella over, and <laughs> the storm just happened to stop. So today, um, as I was asking the Lord, God, what is, what is it that you want to share with us today? Um, and he said, uh, share this message with them. So tonight's uh, message is called, Throw Your Jonah Over the Boat. Throw Your Jonah Over the Boat. And before we get started with the, with the theme there's uh, a few things that I want you to notice in this story that, that really impacted my life when I saw this. So God told Jonah to go to, to Nineveh. And if you look at a map, Nineveh is 500 miles away from the spot that, he, that Jonah was originally at. 500 miles. Now, if you look at the map, and you look at where Tarshish is, Tarshish was 2,500 miles. 2,000, yeah, that's like a day. It is. It's, it's, a, it's a whole bunch. So this is what, the, what, what came to mind. Sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. And that's a quote that, that someone came up with um, a while back. But as I was reading this, I was like, wow. Jonah said, I don't want to go 500 miles away. I'm going to go 2,500 miles away. Maybe the Lord won't speak to me there. <laughs> you know? That's like saying, like the Lord telling you, hey, go to, go to Brandon. And you say, no, Lord, I want to go to Pennsylvania. You know, so that's just like a, a little figure to so that you can understand how far these places were. And and another another thing I want you to notice right here is in verse three. If you turn to verse three, you will find you will find that it says, but Jonah got up and went into the opposite direction to get away from God. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship 
So he paid the fare and went down into it. He paid the fare and went down into it. He paid the fare. And that's such a small, small little emphasis right there. But if you really think about it, about what's happening in this moment, the Bible says he paid a fare. He paid a fare. Let me give you a translation. He traded something that he had. Money. He traded something that he had to get something that he knew was wrong. That he knew was wrong. And as soon as I was reading this, I was like, wow, God, this is, this is crazy. How, how, how dare he invest in such a, such a way? But then he said, son, sometimes that's you. Sometimes that's my church. How many times have we traded the peace and joy of God that he gives us for a moment of satisfaction and pleasure for this world. How many times have we done that? And if you think about it, uh, you think of the sacrifice that God did on the cross. You know, he died for our sin, but ultimately he died too so that we could live a, a life in abundance. A life in abundance. And if you go to Romans fifteen thirteen, you don't have to go there because it's the sake of time, but it says, may the God of hope Fill you with all joy and peace. All joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. So how many times have we traded the peace and the joy that God offers us for a momentary moment of satisfaction? You know, and, 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 and that's just something... That makes you think, because joy and happiness are not the same thing. Joy is one of those feelings that only God can give. Happiness is one of those feelings that, that is something that other things give you, like things, like thoughts, like people. Those are the momentary moments of happiness. But joy, only God can give you that. Only God. So I want you to notice how the storm is being caused because of Jonah this whole time. This whole time. Poor Jonah. He's on this storm. Or actually, he's asleep, so he's not even noticing the storm. If it wasn't for the sailor going down there, he wouldn't have noticed. He would have been sound asleep. But notice how the storm is being caused by, by Jonah. Now, this is what the whole um, message is, is based around. And I want to challenge you with this and encourage you and, and say, when are you going to throw your Jonah out of the boat? When are we going to throw our Jonah out of the boat? You know, the, the boat can represent our life, you know. But we pray for revival and we pray for all these moments and everything. And this is a message that we have to carry out to the world. So I pray that as you hear these words that, that they would be words that you spread to people that you know, you know, you'll need this. And I know sometimes we need this too. And basically, what are you, what are, when are we going to throw that Jonah out of the boat? You know? And, and it's, it's that one thing, that one thing that has been stopping us from fully experiencing God, from fully Saying, God, here I am. It's that one thing. That one thing. And I'm going to give you a few examples. An example of a Jonah could be pride. An example of a Jonah can be jealousy. An example of a Jonah can be selfishness. An example of a Jonah could be unforgiveness. An example of a Jonah can be someone on your phone. Those are just examples. An example of a Jonah could be the things that we watch on, on our phones when no one's looking. That 
is an example of a Jonah. And for me, like when I when I saw this in the Word, and, and the Lord challenged me to throw my Jonas out, one of the big ones was unforgiveness. 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 And just to give you a, a quick little um, testimony, so that you can understand where I'm coming from. Um, so, my my I I grew up with my mom and my dad, and um. It would come to find out that, um, like, my biological dad, uh, he was in Mexico. But my mom f- flew down here um, to the United States uh, because he had some kind of authoritative power in Mexico. And as soon as my mom told him, told him um, hey, I'm pregnant, first words in his mouth was, I know a doctor. I know a doctor. Now, how many of you guys know that that you find the, that information now? It kind of does something to you. And it's like, what? <laughs> but praise the Lord. I'm, in, I'm here in this very moment, like just speaking to you. And my mom took the initiative to protect that child that was in the womb. You know, so in that moment, unforgiveness towards a, a person that I've never met. Never met. Praise the Lord that I met uh, a stepfather that I, I now consider my father, you know, and he's amazing, and I love him to death, and honestly, he's awesome. But there's been a lot of situations um, growing up um, where we used to have, like, family reunions and all this, um, and as a little little kid, abuse would happen, you know, like physical abuse, uh, a, lo- a lot of abuse, you know, from, like, family members. So this is really getting very intimate. I don't think I've ever shared this, um, like, with this many people. But um, I'm just giving you, like, an idea of how unforgiveness kind of got into my heart, you know. And it was was a certain moment when I was in, in my car, and I was so mad at God. I was like, God, why, why, why are you doing this? Like, I deserve to be hurt. I deserve, they deserve for me to not, not forgive them, you know? And on the other side, of, like, of my brain, I had the, my pastor telling me, you have to forgive, forgive. And you're like, they don't deserve my forgiveness. You know, a lot of y'all can identify. I know a lot of y'all can identify because y'all have been through a lot, maybe worse than me. Um, but, like, God, they deserve me being mad at them. But something that the Lord brought to my attention, he said, bitterness and unforgiveness unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. It's like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And slowly, without me even realizing it, I was dying inside. I was dying inside. I couldn't experience God in, in the ways that my friends were experiencing him and in ways that the pastor was saying, hey, he's your father. And like, I was dying inside. I couldn't see this. So it took God saying, hey, that's a Jonah in your life that you have to throw out. And I'm glad to say that two years ago, I threw that Jonah out. <laughs> And now I'm a free man, and now I'm living in his freedom, and it's amazing. I'm telling you, there's nothing like the freedom of God. There's nothing like the freedom of God. And I know a lot of us have wounds. A lot of us have been hurt, but those hurts can't define you. You know, maybe they left a scar, but that scar is going to tell a story one day. And that story is going to change someone's life. And that story is going to make you feel used by the almighty, powerful God. So I'm telling you right now, I'm encouraging someone right now that those scars that you've been trying to hide for so long, those are scars that are going to change someone's life one day. And that's just the power of our God. So that's just an example of a Jonah. But I'm going to do something real quick, and maybe you haven't done this before in in the middle of a sermon, but I believe the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you right now. I believe the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. 
And I know a lot of us, maybe we're like, oh, man, what's the Jonah? What's the Jonah? The Jonah can be a, a endless things, but it's that one thing that you can't stop thinking about that you know, you know. God pointed out, you know. So, Holy Spirit, you are here. You are in this place, and you are listening, Holy Spirit, and we just come in agreement with your word right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for who you are. But in this moment, I pray that you make us aware of the Jonas in our life right now. Holy Spirit, speak right now. We're listening. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. I believe he revealed him to you right now. He revealed him to you. It is not to shame you, because the only one that knows is you and him right now. That's the amazing power of the Holy Spirit. Only you and him know right now. But he loves you enough to not leave you where he found you. He loves you enough to carry you and pick you back up and say, hey, my grace is sufficient. I love you. Let's keep walking. Let's keep having this relationship. Let me love you. That's what the Holy Spirit is speaking. You know, so number one, just to, just to wrap this up real quick, I don't want to keep you here all night. Number one, don't give your joy away. Don't give your joy and your peace away. Take it. Take it back if you've lost it, but don't give your joy and peace away. The Apostle Paul said in one of his letters, he says, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give, the world cannot take it away. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world cannot take it away. And let me tell you something. He cannot take it away. The world cannot take it away. But we can give it away. We can give it away. Willingly. We can give it away. So number one, don't give your joy and peace away. Don't, don't sacrifice your peace in the joy that Jesus died on the cross for you to experience for a moment of satisfaction. And if you've done it, if we've done it, because I know sometimes we mess up, it's okay, we're humans, we can be humans. But his grace is sufficient. And he loves you enough right now to say, hey, Don't give my peace and my joy away because I want you to have fun with it. I want you to experience the real Christian walk. I want you to experience my love right now. And if you're giving it away, take it back. Take it back with that authority because you're his child. You're his child. And last time I checked, the one that calls himself king of kings calls you son and daughter. That makes you royalty. So take it back with authority. Take that peace. Take that joy back. In the name of Jesus right now. In the name of Jesus. Number two, stop throwing the cargo off. Throw the Jonah off. If you look at verse five, it says, 
Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their guys for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. The cargo had nothing to do with Jonah. Nothing at all. But I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me saying, a bunch of Christians are throwing the cargo out and, and letting Jonah sleep in the boat. I was like, oh, Holy Spirit will take my Jonah out <laughs> right now. <laughs> you know? And this is something that the Lord, it, it, says in, it says it in his Bible. It says, obedience is worth way more than, than sacrifice. Obedience to the Lord is worth way more than sacrifice. And with that being said, this is something that one of my mentors said a while back, but it impacted me forever, forever. He said, son, 99.9% .9 obedience is still disobedience. I said, oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord, you are wrecking me right now. He said, 999 .9 Obedience is still a disobedience. God is after the 0.1% that sometimes we live out. That 0.1% is that Jonah. Number three, stop casting lots. God has made it obvious what your Jonah is. God has made it obvious what your Jonah is. If you go to verse 7, it says, then the crew cast at lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused the storm. When they did, the lots identified Jonah as the one. And so many times we hear of people, we come to church sometimes, and I've been a victim of this too, where we're like, oh God, like, what, what, what is that? What is stopping me from experiencing you in a revival way, in a, such a powerful way where I hear you in such an audible voice? God, I miss those days when you used to speak to me so audibly. And God is saying, I've made it obvious what the Jonah is. Are you ready to grow? Are you ready to move on? And I believe tonight we're saying yes. Tonight we are saying yes, Lord. And the fourth one and last one, an action of repentance to God is far greater than an empty prayer without repentance. Let me say that again. An action of repentance to God is far greater than an empty prayer without repentance. An empty prayer. An empty prayer. How many times has that happened to, to maybe someone we know, maybe to us, where we just pray a prayer? But repentance is what changes the lives. Repentance is what takes you to that next level of glory. Surrendering your Jonah and saying, Lord, here I am. I can't do it by myself. I need your power. An action of repentance to God is far greater than an empty prayer without repentance. And that's exactly what happened with Jonah. Could you imagine if Jonah prayed in the boat and said, Lord, calm the storm in Jesus' name? You know, in Jesus' name. Do you think the Lord would have calmed the storm? He would have been like, who are you talking to? <laughs> Do you hear me? Did you hear me first? I never told you to get on the boat in the first place. You know? But in that moment, Jonah was like, you know what? Just the sailors were like, what are we going to do to calm this storm? Jonah's brilliant idea was throw me off the boat. Who's, who would have thought of that first? <laughs> I wouldn't. <laughs> I would have been like, hey, I don't know, solve it. We're going to make it out alive. I'm going back, back downstairs and sleeping. But no, Jonah said, an action of repentance to God is far greater than an empty prayer without repentance. So how about I take action and show the Lord that I'm serious and that I'm ready for change? 
that I'm serious and that I'm ready for change. And tonight, that could just mean surrendering that unforgiveness. That could mean surrendering that jealousy, surrendering that comparison game, that one thing that you know has, has been stopping you, pride, criticism. Jonas can be so many things. But if we surrender them, God will do amazing things through you and in you and through your family and through this generation because you decided to say, yes, Lord, take my Jonas. I'm here. So in Jesus' name, I just go ahead and pray. And Lord, I just thank you. And I thank you for this moment. I thank you for who you are. I thank you for the lives that you spoke to tonight. I thank you because you're an amazing God. You're our Father, and you will never cast us away. And God, I thank you that you're a good God, that you're always looking for our hearts. You're always chasing for us, God, to have our hearts, to have our full attention. So, Holy Spirit, you can have it now. You can have it now. Come on, can you just say that, church? You can have it now, Holy Spirit. You can have it now, Holy Spirit. All the attention, all, all my love. Holy Spirit, it is all yours now. And I'm ready for the next level of glory. In Jesus' mighty and powerful name, we all say, amen, amen, amen. amen.